Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon to you, whatever time you are watching us from. I forget that to open the tagline, but we are Connie and Bell. And, and tonight, we're going to talk about how to find clients as a freelance writer with our special guest who will be sharing the top three copywriting tips for freelancers. But before that, we will be right back. <music> Okay, before I will let Sis Bell talk, let's have an opening prayer first. <laughs> let's remember that we are in the presence of God in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you for blessing us these past few days. We're grateful for all the resources and the people you're sending our way so we are able to bless others and do what you called us to do. We ask for forgiveness for every wrongdoings we committed. We lift up to you every person who is watching and listening to this podcast. We pray that you open their hearts and minds so that whatever we share with them will create an impact on their businesses. We also lift up to you, Bell and I, as well as our special guest, Neri. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us so we will continue to have the courage to say the right words, to share what you're teaching us with the goal of telling your truth. Help and remind us, including our sisters and brothers, that we are building and thriving in our businesses to glorify you and serve the people we work with. We believe that whatever success we have, we owe it all to you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, again, our topic for tonight is how to find... Uh, clients as freelance writer, the top three copywriting tips for freelancers. Okay, it's Bell. It's your turn to talk. Yes. Hello. Good evening, brothers and sisters. So, again, this is Connie and Bell. We go live every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. same time, but we do two different things uh, on each day. Every Monday, we do our live praise and worship session. So, we're inviting everyone to start the week right by um, joining us in our praise and worship session every Monday at 8 p.m. And then Thursdays, um, Connie and I talk more about freelancing, about digital marketing, about our work as virtual assistants. So if you're interested to become a virtual assistant or is wanting to learn more about online freelancing, do catch us live every Thursday. And also we sometimes have guests like for tonight, we have a special guest for tonight. So I'll segue to introducing our special guest for tonight. Um, well, before that, is, before you oh. start with that, we'd like to apologize because we canceled two live sessions lately. The one with Monday, the live praise and worship, and the one last week on Thursday. Thursday is actually, uh, both sessions are because of, aside from the internet connection, I lost my voice last Thursday, so I cannot really talk. So I am still adjusting, if you can notice. So we'd like to apologize, but we're very consistent when it comes to uploading or going live. It just so happens that we lost the internet connection. It's not consistent. We have data, but it's not enough to do a live session. So we apologize about that, and I hope that my voice will be okay so that we can do the live praise and worship on Monday. But before Sisabel introduce our special guest, of course, if you want to have your own copy and start your virtual assistant, go ahead and visit ConnieZabala.com slash VA book to get your copy available on hard copy here in the Philippines. This one is what you will get for those who are in Amazon. If you want the print copy, this is the one you will get. But it's also available on ebook, audiobook, and Kindle there. So visit Kanisabara.com. And forward and, by. Oh, and forward by, of course, our latest mentor, Jan Pagulayan. Anyway, you can visit Facebook if you want the print copy here in the Philippines. There. Okay. Wow. Enough talking because I'll I might lose my voice again. Local and international, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so let's not keep them waiting. To introduce again to introduce our special guest for tonight. She is the CEO of Neri Marcos Digital, 
a direct response copywriting agency for course creators and industry experts. She specializes in course launches and has been working with international clients in the US, UK, Australia, Belgium, and Iran since 2018. Wow. She's also a copywriting coach for aspiring Filipino copywriters and one of the tribe coaches of the Freelance Movement Tribe, yes. a premium freelancing community in the Philippines. She's also a certified public speaker in the areas of leadership, motivation, inspiration, personal growth, and self-development. So without further ado, here's Miss Neri Marcos. Ooh, clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Hello everyone, and thank you for having me. Yay! Oops, thank you for saying yes. Sorry. Yes, thank you for saying yes. So, of course, someone is commenting and supporting Neri. Hello, Co hi, Coach Neri from Cheska Opeña. Good evening. <laughs> Hello, Jessica. <laughs> Thank you for saying yes to our invitation. Can you share with us your short story? I think we have the same first mentor, if I remember. Really. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We have the, uh, the same mentor. So, okay. So, my story when I start, how I started freelancing, right? Okay. So, way back um 2010. So I become a mom to um, to my son. So I was an accountant back then, and I was happy that I will I be, I became a mom that time. But then there's this responsibility and of providing for that mm -hmm. kid, right? And my salary during that time doesn't. Um, is not was not enough to cover the expenses like the milk, diapers, vaccination, monthly checkup, and all. So I turned online. I, I searched for how to work from home, and I stumbled upon a mentor, Jomar Hilario, which mm. was the same mentor as yours. So I enrolled in his course, the VE course, back then. Uh, but then before that, uh, I know in my heart that it was the right opportunity for me. But my finances was not agreeing at that time. <laughs> so I waited. So I waited for a few months. I, I tried to save up some money, even though it's around, I think, 3,500 pesos during that time. So that that's that that's how broke I was <laughs> that I don't I didn't have 3,500 as a savings for um, in my pocket so then one time my boss gave us a surprise bonus so we didn't expect that he will be giving us a bonus it was 5,000 pesos I think so I grabbed that opportunity so I have 5,000. So I, I enrolled in the course. I have 1,500 left. <laughs> so, and the rest is history. So I I become a VA after a few months, I think around October. I, I got the course, I think 2011, January 1, 2011. And I think 10 months, October, I landed my first VA job. So it's part-time. There's a lot of dilly dallying because you know you have a full time job and then you have a son to take care of to, to care of. So there's a lot on my plate that time. But then I really tried to make it work because I I I believe in my heart that it's God's way of telling me that you're in the right path and you should try that and that will be the solution to your problem and. It was. So, yeah. And then after that, um, I enrolled in another course of Serge Omar. It's uh, it's about tech and automation. I, I forgot the exact name of the course. But in there, he introduced to me copywriting in one of the trainings of the webinars that, that he did back then. 
and I got fascinated with it. Like, I really like writing even way back when I was in high school. So when that was introduced to me, it ignited again the passion for me to write. So that's why I, after that training, I enrolled in on the other copywriting courses. And yeah, and that, and I think it's 2018 that I started to, to get copywriting clients for my freelance mm. career. I, I consider that freelancing as a career back then it's only like around 2019 that I totally embraced it this is a business <laughs> this is not just a career this is not a job this is a business that you need to build yeah. so yeah so that's that's basically how I landed as a copywriter yeah that's that's interesting so it, I think uh, a lot of um, freelancers go through that you know that that shift in mindset that this is a business but I, I'll I want to backtrack a bit. So you, you mentioned that you had your course from Jomar in January, and then you had your first um, client October, right? October. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think a lot of people are interested to know. So was it like you already left your corporate job or you're doing it in parallel at the time? Yeah, I ha- I do freelancing part time during that time because it's because the contract that I got is part time so I didn't resign immediately because I'm a type of person that I need to be 100% sure before I (laughs) I decide into something like I need to know the pros and cons first and what uh I need to be like 50 like almost 90% sure that I'm safe with my decision. So that's that's how I that's how I think, that's how I approach things. So I said to myself, so I got after the fir- well it's a part time, then I got another opportunity as a bookkeeping assistant for an Australian company. So after uh, I got that it started as a part time. But then I talked to to the client, I told the client um client if you're gonna hire me full time let me know ahead of time so i can resign to my uh current job because i'm i'm still working full time but since uh, we are like testing the waters during that time so he didn't uh he didn't give me that assurance yet he said that okay let's test you for like a few months and that if things go well then we can talk about that so we did like i think um two months and then he said on one of our meetings that neri resign on february because i will be hiring you full-time for the uh for the business so wow (laughs) so so that's it so that's how i got i shifted to full-time freelancing (laughs) So your number one value is certainty. Yes. <laughs> you have to be certain. Stability. <laughs> yeah. I have to be certain before yeah. I jump. <laughs> nice. I think many Filipinos can relate to that, especially those who have full-time jobs. But before we continue, let's check the comments. So Mary Grace. Bartolo said, let's go coach Neri Wood Wood. <laughs> and Emily Bumata says, hi, coach Neri. And the happy penguin says, hello there. Good evening <laughs> to our viewers and, of course, supporters of our special guest for tonight. There, that's amazing. So for our viewers, again, you don't need to do this full time. You can, you know, emulate our guests to test and see just the waters yes <laughs> so no need to well if you've been like um retrenched or lay uh, how do you call that fire terminate mm-hmm. yes then you can do that because that's what happened to me but if you have <laughs> the choice then you can do it part time you can start part time yes there <clears throat> okay so what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages uh, when it comes to running your freelance business? Okay. When it comes to advantages, 
for me, it's the flexibility and the independence. Flexibility, like I can work whatever time I want. I don't have like uh, uh, a strict schedule with the client as to the time that I need to work or the time that I need to 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 communicate with them and all that. And then I have total control of my schedule. I don't need to ask permission to a boss for for me to have a live or for me to go out or whatever because I manage the business. I am the boss in, in essence, right? Because we are we, we are the owners of our business. So I have that uh work life balance in a sense. Well there's not for me there's not actually work life balance, but manageable work life balance or manageable work life um aspect so it's not like there's there's balance it's more of like the priority that you want to set to a certain aspect of your life another thing that another advantage is the uh unlimited earning potential like you can set the rate that you want to charge to your clients there's no like standard or or like benchmark that you need to charge as long as because our service is not where it's not in relation to the number of hours we work we are in the uh our barometer or measuring stick is just as long as we deliver the work and the result that we deliver to them are are good enough for them to be happy and achieve the goal of the business then by all means that's all good for them and then another thing is you can work with a diverse range of clients. So you can work with course creators, you can work with um, doctors, you can work with roofing contractors, you can work with those kinds of businesses in the US, in the UK, it, even in the Philippines. And you're not constrained by the boundaries that you said. Your imagination is the limit. So we have a lot of opportunities that we can get as long as we're willing to learn and we're willing to take on opportunities that we think will help us grow and develop as a person and as a freelance business owner. On the other hand, the disadvantage, disadvantages of being a freelancer is there's a possibility that you will lose clients in the way along the way because there are things that we cannot control that we're out of control of like their decision to end the contract mm -hmm. just like that like they can they can drop the contract that you have uh on the table well just like that he, clients can say to you near you we can I, I want to end the contract and I, this is my 30-day notice so in third days you will have you you don't have that client anymore. And then another disadvantage is you are your self motivator. You don't have other people or a boss who will motivate you to do your job to make your to make to make your job better or to fulfill whatever you need to do because you are the owner. You are the CEO of your business. So because sometimes things get overwhelming right and you don't have the the bandwidth to really do all the things that you need to do and that is the downside of being a freelancer because as a freelance business owner you have to do a lot of things you have to deliver the service that you promise you have to to find clients you have to market yourself you have to manage your finances you have to file your taxes you have to do all those things aside from if you're a mother if you're a uh, a son or daughter to your to your parents or whatever responsibility that you have aside from freelancing, then it gets overwhelming. And yeah, so those are the disadvantages, but those dis disadvantages can be um, remedied or are solved because like for the uncertainty, well, you just need to, you know, find more clients to serve so that you will not worry about losing another one because it's easy for you to just get another client as long as you have the prospecting system in place and you're all covered in that client getting aspect 
And then the motivation, well, you need to instill the discipline to really do the work because no one will work on your business except you as hard as you more than yourself. So yeah, so those are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, being a freelancer. Yes. And if you can actually uh, resolve the disadvantages, there are no actually disadvantages. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, um, let's read the comments again before the next question. The Happy Penguin says, this is JJ, by the way, from TCF. <laughs> what is TCF? Ito ang aking YouTube uh, it's, it's pen name. The no. Copywriting Fellowship. It's Ooh. it's the copywriting uh, community wherein I am also one of the coaches. Ooh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Of course, to Justin... Uh, Thank you, Neri, for sharing with us. It's always nice to hear how others started out in their past experiences. Okay. Uh, the, there is a question here from Emily. What do you do, Coach, when you're overwhelmed? Oh, nice question. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> when I'm overwhelmed, I stop what I'm doing. Like, I do nothing. Um. I move away from what I'm currently doing and just do nothing. I usually when I'm overwhelmed, I prepare a coffee. Like out of my computer, I brew my coffee and then I sat on the kitchen. So so I just drink and think. So I I deviate from 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 my home office. I usually just move away from that. And then after a few minutes, things will feel less overwhelmed. And then I go back and then prioritize what I what I need to do. Like which which of the things that I that that uh, that's on my list um, needs to be completed, and it's important. So urgent and important and then important but not urgent not important but urgent so that's that's the order of the of the tasks of how 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 i approach the tasks that i'll be working on can you repeat that i think that's four right urgent and important and yeah. then i think urgent that's four important, yeah. important but not urgent Mm -hmm. Urgent, but not important. Not important, but not urgent. Okay. So, so take note yeah. of those. Mm -hmm. The four quadrants. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, I do have uh, some a follow up question. Do you have since you've been like in the freelance for years now, and now that you are also coaching to aspiring freelancers and to copyright copywriters? Um, do you have any books or other resources you can recommend when it comes to freelancing, not just in copywriting, either either way? For resources, um, for, for books, freelancing, I don't have like a particular book that I can think of right now when it comes to freelancing, aside from John Mar Sir John Mars virtual careers book and your book in freelancing. Uh, but with courses, there are other courses that I can recommend. Like, aside from the Freelance Movement Tribe program, well, if you want to pursue like copywriting, um, I can definitely suggest my mentor's program, which is the Copywriting Fellowship, which was mentioned earlier. Because that is... Uh, one of the courses that's that has helped me um, improve as a copywriter and really become the copywriter that I am now, because yeah. it all encompasses the foundation that you need in order for you to to become uh, a better copywriter. We will talk more so, yeah. about that later. 
I believe we will allow Neri to promote any program that she has. Meanwhile, if you still have questions to her, feel free to share in the comments. So since this is, again, this is Freelancing with Faith, let's jeer towards the faith this time. So do you have any uh, favorite Bible verses that inspire you or remind you when you feel down um, sometimes? <laughs> Yeah, I actually have one. I, I, hindi ko siya, I'm, okay, I didn't memorize it, but it's, it's I jot it down. So Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and mm. lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So, yeah, so that's my favorite verse because it kind of gives us hope. Like like for me, it kind of gives me hope that even things get tough sometimes. I know for a fact that my challenges will be solved because I know that the Lord will give me that what I need to solve that challenges. And he will make sure that I will go to the path that is best for me. So, Because sometimes we think that when we didn't get the things that we want, we thought that God is not giving us what we want. But the mm -hmm. thing is, it's really not that way. It's actually re redirecting us to the best path that the God created for us. And we will not realize it until we are in that situation or we are in that destination that God has planned as to where we want to be. So, yeah, so that's why that is what I I love about that verse because it gives that sense of hope and assurance that whatever happens, things will be all right. Yes. And that's my wallpaper, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love to share. I love to touch on that because um, earlier you mentioned that I, I, I highlighted that certainty is one of your top values, right? You have to be certain on things. And then now you're sharing that trusting and surrendering everything to God. It's, it's like, you know, um, I'm sure because i being a control freak myself i can i can somehow relate you know sometimes i yeah. ask lord is it is this where you're leading me to you know um things like that so i just mm -hmm. I, I just that's an interesting um cross between those two values right the trusting part and then the the i have to be certain on this um mm -hmm. um part well, yes. in making decision, I always ask, Lord, is this really what you want or is this a redirection? And then I just let it be. Even though I, I, I take into consideration a lot of things before deciding, I still have that God feeling that, okay, things will go, up, go right or things will be fine it, as long as I trusted him with whatever outcome it will be. So Absolutely. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So for our viewers, it's um trusting the Lord doesn't mean we don't have to do anything, but rather we do our part and leave the rest to God because again, we are finite and God is infinite. So God yeah. can do past the things that we already did. So there. Mm -hmm. so, um, what is before we continue with the uh, main topic for tonight? What is your biggest blessing um, since you started in freelancing? For me, the biggest blessing that freelancing brought me is the opportunity, the freedom for me to have time with my family, like whenever or wherever I want, like. The freedom to see my kids, to see them grow their milestone, whatever they do, I'm I'm here by their side. So 
that for me is something that is priceless that no no amount of money can can replace or like more valuable than so yeah i think that for me is the biggest blessing because not a lot of parents got that opportunity for 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 some reason but i felt blessed to have this freelancing to be able for me to afford that that kind of liberty that kind of um freedom to to be with my kids and still you know earn a living to mm. provide for them and be able to give the comfort that i never thought i could provide when i was in the corporate you know so yeah so that's that's it oh thank you so we're ending the first just the first section we're not that yet just the first section of this live interview so we will move to the next section which is uh neri will share with us about the top three copywriting tips for freelancers so go ahead take it away okay so for the uh three tips that i want to share with you when it comes to copywriting uh for freelancers the first one that I want to share with you is to focus on your client and not you when it comes to creating your content, when it comes to optimizing your profile, because we all know that we need like uh, a strong online presence when it comes to our business, because our business mainly live online. So we need to have that solid online presence for us to establish our credibility as a freelancer and also to uh inform the people that on our network that we serve this market and we serve this service to them and so that's why it's important that you focus on the client focus on them and not you because it's really important that you connect with the client in a way that is very relatable for them because when we create our profile for example we don't need to like impress them with with our credentials like i like mo most freelancers in their profile tell about themselves like i am good in copywriting for example or i i have a very high attention to detail i have 10 years of experience working for this for this market or work uh serving this service but the thing is clients don't care about that they don't care about what you can do what what they care about is them they have in their mind the question what's in it for me when they read your profile so we need to focus and how we can help them instead and we need to communicate that in our messaging so that's why it's very important that even though we are talking about ourselves like in a in our about page or in a, our about section we should not focus on ourselves but focus on the client so you might be asking Mary how will I do that well you have to focus on their problems you have to emphasize what are their problems when it comes to their business and how your service can help solve those problems. So that is how you will position yourself when it comes to creating your profile so that they know, ah, okay, Neri is a copywriter, so he can help me write better messaging for my, for my business because he knows how to use persuasive words in order to convert prospects into buyers and buyers to raving fans. So basically, that is how you will create your profile to make it more compelling. All right. So number two, tip number two is you need to niche down and specialize. So a lot of freelancers like offers like a range of services and they uh mentioned that it is something like they offer digital marketing services for example so digital marketing services as we all know encompasses a lot of services so it's not just copywriting it could also be social media marketing it could also be paid advertising what else seo 
funnels and all that. So there are a lot. But in order for you to stand out, for you to differentiate yourself, you need to be popular. You need to be known for a certain niche and a certain service. Why? Because it's easier to understand, right? So that's why I highly encourage aspiring freelancers to choose just one offer and one skill one offer and one market, right? So do not offer multiple or more than one skill or serve to more than one market because that will confuse your audience. And aside from that, you will be also forgotten. Like if you offer a lot of services or a lot of, or you're serving a lot of markets, it will not stick to your audience mind who really is your market or who really what really is your skill so it's hard to differentiate yourself and if you are offering the same services with other freelancers that it will be very hard for you to be recognized by your clients and the last thing that we want is for them to not recognize you right? So by niching down and by specializing, you will become known for a certain thing. So that's why, like, if you are in a community of freelancers, and you are known, like, for example, so in my case, let's, let's take my case as an example. So I offer copywriting services for course creators. So whenever a course creator need a copywriting services, my network will know that I offer that that I am the one who specializes in that. So it is easier for them to recommend me to that course creator because they know that I offer that service and that is what I specialize in. So that's number two. So number three is very important. You have to speak the language of your target market. So... When I say language, it's the words that they use when they are talking about their business, right? So that, uh, it involves their challenges, what their goals are, what their businesses are all about. You might be asking why it's important that we speak their language. Well, if you speak their language, it's more likely that they will know that you understand them. And that will create that a connection with them through your messaging. So they, in turn, they will trust you because they know that you understand them. It's like a friend, right? Your friend know your problems. They know what you have been through. They know what makes you happy. So they know how to talk to you, right? You are sharing the same language. So it's easier for you to communicate with your friends, right? The same thing goes with your clients. When talking to clients, when you're creating content, when you're uh, creating your profile, you have to use the language that they're using. Because if not, you will not connect with them and they will feel that you don't know them, right? Like, for example, millennials use like uh, abbreviations, right? The FRFR or SMH. But if you talk to like millennials, uh, no, no, the Gen Zs. No, no, the boomers, I should say, the boomers, the baby boomers, they will not understand that FRFR. What is that? What they only know is maybe ILY or ASL, right? So if you don't know the language, then you will not be able to create that connection with them. So that's why you have to know the language that your target market is using. So you might be asking, how will I know that? Well, you have to talk to them, right? When you are 
um, having a conversation with them via chat or maybe on a call, maybe on a networking call, whatever, you can ask them those questions. What are their challenges? What are their um, desire? Why do they get into the business? What goal do they want to achieve out of the business, right? By doing that, you'll have a database of the mess the, of the things that they want or the problems that they have, and you will be able to use that in your messaging so that when they they see your your content, they will know that, okay, we're sharing the same language. It gives that perception that you that they, that you understand them. Right. And when they have that perception, they usually think that you have the solution to their problem. Right. And if you can describe their challenges and desire better than they can tell themselves, then that means that you've done your copywriting right. And it will be easier for you to convert that prospect into a client. So those are my three tips uh, when it comes to uh, connecting to your clients, when it comes to getting more clients. So number one is focus on them and not you. Number two is niche down and specialize. And number three, speak the language of your target market. So basically, that's it. Yay. Now I'm curious what FRFR means. <laughs> let's um let's give Siscons a quiz. <laughs> Pop quiz. What is FRFR? What is NGL? <laughs> Actually, I didn't know about that until I do a research for a talk inside a tribe. So I use that as like uh an engagement mechanism, like. <laughs> Type F R F R, and then the millennials are saying, "Wow, <laughs> good, Coach good Mary thing." I, yeah, good thing I have um, teens over here, so I'm updated. I have to keep <laughs> yeah. up. Really, I have to keep up. <laughs> they have their exactly. own language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't have a teenager anymore. She's twenty six. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for the wonderful day. Very, very insightful, especially when it comes to literally speaking the language of your target. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now can relate. Anyway, we'll move ahead with the next section, which is the fast Q&A round. Yes, yeah, so this is our chance to get to know how how Neri um, chooses her favorite things. <laughs> so fast, this is what we call the fast Q and A round. So first question: cake or pie? Pie. Able to speak every language in the world, or able to talk to animals? Every language in the world. The last movie or series you watched? The Gray Man. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> on, Net on Netflix? Netflix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, last song playing on your mind, your LSS. The song uh, from Pink. I don't know if What's that song? I forgot the title, but I also forgot maybe, the lyrics. Maybe they they want you to sing it. <laughs> I can check. Let me double check that. What did I? I don't think it will. It's it has it has the lyrics perfect. Mm. Mm, yeah. yeah, I think I, I know what you're referring to. So, uh, yeah. so you're safe. <laughs> we won't we won't force you to sing. <laughs> Teleportation or flying? Teleportation. Um, the last book that you've read. Ah, I saw. Um, the storyteller secret. Wow. Um, the top three people that you follow. 
Mel Robbins, Rob Dial, Simon Sinek. Yay! Paper or plastic? Paper. Summer or rainy days? Summer. Favorite day of the week? Monday. Ask permission or beg for forgiveness? Ask permission. Bait. <laughs> Last but not the least, if you could have a face-to-face -face conversation with God and ask Him one question or say one thing, what would it be? Thank you. That's it. Thank I'm sorry. You. I uh, thank you. Thank you. We lost. We mm. lost you for <laughs> a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So that concludes our fast Q and A round. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so for those who are um watching on the replay, you can still ask your questions. We will relay them to Neri so she can answer your questions. Any um last piece of advice to our aspiring freelancers? Um, freelancing and life in general is, is like a game. And if you want to win the game, you have to take it seriously. Like you have to play the game and exert extra effort. So it's not, it's not really easy to get into freelancing. But if you just have the focus, the determination, and the why, the deep why, to get into it, then it's possible for you to succeed in this industry. And you have the power to really write your own game. Like how you want to design your freelancing business or even your life in general. It is in your control to for you to be able to do that. And you have to believe that you can. And know that you have to find the right mentors who can guide you through the path. And be in the right community to be able to really get through it. Because it's really not easy to be alone in freelancing. So that's why I'm very thankful that I'm in a community, not just in the tribe, but also in the copywriting uh, community. Hmm. So you get to learn. And at the same time, you have that assurance that everything will be fine because there are a lot of people who, who will support you and who will help you get through that rough patch in your freelancing journey. But as you continue to doing it, just make sure that you are um, ready and there's no turning back because the rewards are very, very huge in this industry as long as you consistently do the action and make it work. So, yeah, basically that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course... Uh, let's continue discussing the program that you have. You can share that now. Actually, it's not my program, but uh, Coach Miguel Companer's program. I don't mm. know if it's open right now, but the other program is the Freelance Movement Tribes program, which will be opening soon. But for now, we have a 12-day client getting challenge, which will happen on May 29. So if you want to... To join, you can do so by, I forgot the, um, the link. It's, what's the link? Maybe I we can just. Yeah, Connie will just um, add it in the description. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and also. Yeah, so I will provide the link to. later. <laughs> okay, so if you want to connect with Neri, feel free to visit the description. I believe I shared her pages already, so feel free to visit and support her. And we will update it when it comes to 12-day challenge. Yes, the tribe is having a 12-day uh, challenge before the actual launch or the open enrollment for the 
freelance movement tribe. So this challenge is actually free. So just visit the description. We will update this with the link. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much there for your time. But before we end, let's have a closing prayer, Sis Ben. Okay, let's remember that we're in the presence of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for another episode done successfully. Thank you for the opportunity to share our knowledge and experience to serve our clients and our audiences. Hopefully, our fellow service providers were able to learn something too. Thank you to all the people who support us in our mission. Thank you for the chance to bless others through this platform. We lift up to you all our viewers, our listeners, our clients, the people we work with, Neri and her loved ones, Lord. Continue to bless them in all areas of their lives. Whatever their petitions are right now, we pray with them, believing that whatever happens, you always have the best intentions for us. We lift up to you all these, but in the end, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And before we end, let, let's check the comments first. Hold on, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Justin said, I'm a sister in playing the game. It can be hard sometimes, though. I always say, know your limits. Your words are dead on. Sorry if my way of speaking is misunderstood sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Filipinos to Filipinos because Justin is American. <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> sorry, Justin. using a phone in my fingers or <laughs> two. <laughs> I think sorry. there's also uh, another comment here. <laughs> Naisip ko sa last song playing, I clue, recrawl. <laughs> not. Sorry. Recall. <laughs> ay, 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 sis cons. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain. Not recall. updated. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, I actually, before we end, I actually say this book again because you can do this along with the 12-day client. So, just visit conizabala.com slash VA book uh, to know more about this book. Again, Mary, thank you. Thank you so much. For granting our invitation, we hope to see you. If you have any programs opening, we want to guess you again. Let Just let us know. And for our viewers, yeah. feel free to connect with Neri and support her. Bye, everyone. We'll see you on Thursday for another live. Thank you. Ah, Monday. Monday <laughs> first. <laughs> Monday first for another live praise and worship session. And on Thursday for another special guest again. Bye, everyone. God bless.